topic of my talk is on the cave bats research of the UPLB Museum of Natural History. So, okay. Uh, simbolan ko na. Right, so cave bats in the Philippines. So there are about 42 species all in all that are of bats that are associated with caves. And if you look at it uh, within a bigger context in Philippine biodiversity, so cave bats constitute about more than 20% of all total land mammals here in the country. So in essence, uh, well, it's about one out of five Philippine mammals is a cave dweller. And if you look at the second pie chart, so more than half of the, the bats that are found here in the Philippines are cave dwellers. And then if you look closely uh, for all vertebrates that are residing or have been associated with caves, uh, bats are the most species rich among the cave vertebrates, as you can see in the table in number three or, or in the graph in the number three. So bats far and wide uh, exceed the number of, of, of number of species that are found in caves as compared to other vertebrate groups like frogs, reptiles, and birds. Right, so uh, here's a slide about the state of cave bats research in the Philippines. As you can see on the map, uh, actually I contributed it, I contributed this to, to DNR, BNB when they made the handbook. So as you can see here, um, the, the, the index to the number of caves that are found in, in, in the country. And as you can see, uh, there are a lot of caves that are found you know, uh, in, in, in other areas, like for example, in Mindanao. So they have large concentrations of caves there, particularly in Western Mindanao, uh, in, in the Beagle region, the Beagle Peninsula, and of course, uh, scattered all throughout uh, the islands of Luzon. And uh, well, this, the, uh, this information comes from the DNR BNB uh, 2008 uh, gazetteer or publication, so we may just need an update. But uh, there, are, from there, there are about two, more than 2,000 documented caves in the Philippines, and like I said, it has to be uh, upgraded, you know, updated as well because it's been um, more than 13 years now uh, of this uh, current tally. And from those more than 2,000 caves, less than 100 caves have been surveyed for bats. So this uh, translates to about just about a little about five percent palang ang napupuntahan ng mga ng mga bat biologists sa, sa mga kweba dito sa Pilipinas. And if you can also look closely, uh, if you zone in on Calabarzon, uh, there's about two uh, cave researches has been done. Uh, one in uh, Polilio Island, and then in Mount Makiling. And there's only one published scientific paper on cave bats in Calabarzon. Uh, it is great, it is very timely that this project or this program will, will rectify that, that very uneven um, number or very, very, very few research that has been done on cave bats. And then, of course, uh, the Sabinate Tonini Dr. Jun Lit, uh, the cave ecology program of the UPLB MNH. So, actually, it started back in 2008, and it's the brainchild of Dr. Ireneo Lit Jr. And I could uh, quote him on this. So he envisioned that you know, uh, the m &H should have a unique research niche for the whole Philippines. You know, other institutions like UP Deleman had uh, ongoing research in, at this, in the Sierra Madre. Other institutions as well has their own niche uh, research program. And Dr. Litt uh, imagined or re-strategized the, 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 you know, the, the trust of the UPLB m &H research and looking into a habitat type that without or very, very, very few uh, research activities. And Guy Dinanasabini, Dr. Litna, uh, uh, part of this ecology program, cave ecology program, is the institution of the Bio 154 Cave Ecology. It's actually the first in the country to offer such course on cave ecology. And this is participated by several faculty. Um, and uh, from, from the Institute of Biological Sciences, like uh, from uh, faculty regent, Dr. Emeline Dupo, uh, Professor Ivy Lamb Lambio is a, a botanist, uh, Professor um, Anneli Hadsal as well, who will be talking uh, this afternoon. And of course, uh, our very own director, uh, museum director, Dr. Marian De Leon. And uh, from 2008, I, from my last tally, so we've done, cave life research in 11 cave systems in the Philippines. So you have here Polilio, uh, uh, Cavinti. Uh, we've, I think this was mentioned before, we've done research in Santa Teresita in Cagayan, in Pangasinan, 
Uh, we've also done work in, in Marinduque, uh, some parts of Cebu as well, and uh, in Davao region in Mindanao. So, uh, so over that 13 year period, so we've, we've uh, uh, sa Pilipinas. Although, of course, there are some areas in the Philippines, like for example, Samar Leyte, which we haven't really uh, done any cave research work at all. And with this uh, research program of the MNH uh, resulted to various publications, uh, particularly on entomology, botany, and microbiology. For cave bats, uh, uh, we've shelled out, we've produced uh, 10 published papers as well. Right, so um, part of the my, my talk here is um, relaying to you the, the UPLB and MNH research highlights on cave bats. So, right, so we've, all, we've worked on specifically on cave bats diversity and conservation with, a, uh, with an example of a paper here that's published back in 2015. So we've done uh, survey work of cave dwelling bats in Marinduque Island. And like I said earlier, uh, we've done bat surveys in 11 cave systems. And this has resulted to uh, new island records uh, and species rediscovery, as you can see here in uh, the picture of the bat below, uh, Hypsiderus coronatus. Uh, previous, uh, prior to our work, uh, it was known only from a single specimen in Agusan. It was collected in 1871 and hasn't been collected or uh, documented ever since. Pero nung bumalik po kami sa Polilio back in uh, the early 2000, uh, mid 2000, so we found a very uh, thriving, uh, well, relatively abundant population of this enigmatic um, bat species. And of course, we've done several publications as well on cave uh, bat surveys. For example, from our uh, PhD student, uh, Steve Michael Alcazar, who I think is the chair of the forestry department and in, in Cebu. Uh, for, yeah. In Cebu, so he did a diversity of cave dwelling bats in Cebu Island. Um, and, uh, we also did papers, uh, we also did research on not only with the, the, the cave bat survey, but looking into the magnitude of disturbances in caves. And these disturbances are, of course, uh, anthropogenic in nature. And we've also looked into what are the effects of these um, anthro anthropogenic disturbances on cave bat populations. So for example, here with a paper by Nina Regina Kibod, and there are several uh, um, curators of Museum of Natural History and members of the, 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 the NICER program who participated, uh, who are co-authors of this paper. So uh, Nina did this paper in Samal Island, uh, looking into the diversity of cave dwelling bats in Samal, and also uh, very important, more importantly, looking into the threats uh, to the cave dwelling bats. And more on these uh, threats, of, we've, we've produced a poster. Uh, I think uh, this was uh, presented in the North American Bat Research uh, uh, Conference. So it is the conservation status of Philippine cave bats. So we'll look, we'll look into four different karst provinces all over the Philippines. So this was in Polilio, uh, in Cagayan, in Cebu, and in, on, on Bohol. So we've assessed the uh, what are the threats that are happening on these caves? And we found out that uh, several bat populations are severely impacted by, by anthropogenic threats. So uh, we've also done some cutting edge research on uh, cave dwelling bats. Uh, for example, uh, this paper uh, published by my, my undergraduate advisor, advisee, uh, season, uh, Frex de Mokolangan on the seasonal emergence counts uh, from multi multi-species horseshoe bat roost in the Philippines. So this was specifically in, in Mount Makiling. And this was the study, the, the lone study that was done on cave bats for the Calabarzon region that was, I was referring to. So I'm saying that this is a cutting edge research because uh, of its use, we, uh, of its use of ultrasonic frequency detectors or your bat detectors to identify bat species. As you can see here below, uh, below on your left, uh, some of the spectrograms of the, uh, the echolocation cause of, of your bats. And at the same time in synchrony, uh, we also use infrared videography to census bat populations. So it's in, synchrony, uh, it's in synchrony using the bat detector and your, your infra, infrared video, um, video device to specifically count the number of bats that are 
detector coming out of the cave. As you can see at the back detector, and we have the, the, the monitor uh, within um, at the front of the cave. And then this is the Kwani Makikita do some monitor. So it's an infrared. So remember that we're doing this in, in pitch dark. So the Makita, so uh, really had to use infrared videography to, to count the, the population of bats there. And uh, on top of the, the basic research on ecology and uh, surveys, we've also done bat virus research in caves. As, uh, as an example here, uh, we've detected or isolated a genetically divergent hantavirus uh, that's harbored by your Geoffroy's reset or your Rosettus amplexi caudatus. So this bat, uh, the Geoffroy's reset, this is found uh, a sizable, a sizable population of this species found in Samal Island. Actually, it's in the Guinness Book of World Records, having a population of 1.8 million individuals in one very, very small cave. So for, for our bat virus research, so essentially it's, it's a collab collaborative research work uh, with UPLB MNH, with the uh, College of Veterinary Medicine, also in UPLB, and several universities spearheaded by, in Japan, spe spearheaded by University of Tokyo. So we started this in 2007, so it's, it predated the, the cave ecology program, but uh, succeeding years uh, ahead, I mean, we, we also ventured um, uh, doing our bat virus work in caves. And I would like to say that uh, the, 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 the research into to, to bat virus is the most extensive, most extensive uh, uh, here in the Philippines for Philippine bats. And the highlights of our virus research would include, you know, we visited 11 provinces and islands. Uh, from there, we visited five cave systems and produced 12 publications. And we've also discovered or isolated uh, eight virus families, including um, yeah, virus families. So for example, some of the papers that we produce, uh, we've detected the first, um, you know, uh, teropin ortorio virus in fruit bats. So it's the first of its kind that's been detected in, in fruit bats. And probably one of the most significant uh, papers on Philippine bat virology, virology. Uh, this one is uh, the genomic and serological detection of bat coronavirus from bats in the Philippines, um, wherein we discovered four novel genotypes of bat coronavirus. And uh, this work on bat viruses gained international media attention, particularly uh, well, starting early this year uh, from the South China Morning Post, as you can see here, uh, the, the staff and curators of uh, the Museum of Natural History were, were called the virus hunters, you know, but, uh, you know, hoping to prevent uh, the next pandemic. So we all, we've also had uh, attention from the Atlantic, a highly prestigious uh, news program, a uh, 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 news outlet in, based in the US. Uh, in Al Jazeera, which is um, the main English uh, language uh, news um, group in, in the Middle East, and then in Reuters, um, which has a uh, global reach in terms of providing news. So we were also um, interviewed there and we're, uh, our activities on bat research in particularly in caves uh, where we're documented. And surprisingly also in nature, uh, which is the, one of the highly, uh, one of the most highly prestigious uh, scientific journals in the world. Okay, so uh, before I end my talk, so uh, this was already emphasized by Dr. Uh, JC Gonzalez, the program leader. So just a very quick um, uh, plug in for the project one. So uh, this on cave vertebrates, invertebrates and hydrogeological assessments. And this is spearheaded by the program leader and project leader, Dr. JC Gonzalez. Uh, and several uh, curators from the museum are, are also participating as members of the, the group. Uh, you have Dr. Decibel Islava, who will be talking uh, this uh, later on for, for, for the ge hydrogeological aspect of the cave. You also have Dr. Pau Digia and Professor Jude de Malibot. Uh, both are curators at the Museum of Natural History. And Julius Parkon, uh, who's also no, uh, the crow project leader uh, for cave vertebrates and invertebrates. And Renz Duco, and uh, technician or staff from the museum. Edison Costco. So essentially, um, just repeating what I uh, said earlier, uh, 
uh, what the project will be doing is establishment of baseline data for Calabarzon. And of course, coming out of that, uh, aside from the, the, the actual history data that will be, will be produced, so there will be policies and recommendations for conservation, which um, will be very, very look into emphasizing the, the importance of our, res, of our results in, in providing these policies and recommendations. And one of the highlights of this project is also, it also includes very, very exciting topics, like for example, hydrogeology uh, by Dr. Slava. Uh, we'll also be doing work on bioacoustics uh, because of, we'll be documenting or characterizing uh, echolocation calls from bats. And of course, uh, advertisement calls from, from amphibians or frogs, and also include pathogen research. So I think this will be mostly be done by Dr. Marian De Leon who's, uh, for her project number four, but uh, we'll also be trying to look into um, to, to do other pathogens such as viruses that can be found on bats. And like, I, uh, like has been emphasized before, this will be the most comprehensive research on caves in the Philippines. So it's not just gonna be on, on Calabarzon, so we've emphasized the, the, the expertise and competencies of the, the, the curators and staff of the UPLB Museum of Natural History. So this will be set as a benchmark for studying uh, the biodiversity and the geologic, hydrogeologic features of caves here in the Philippines. So dito po nagtatapos ang aking talk. Maraming salamat po.